Welcome back everyone once again. Hopefully, well, we should be finishing up all of the trim for the sunroom with the exception of the crown in this episode. I have some more stuff to make and we have some more stuff to install, so we're gonna jump right into it. We're gonna be kind of finishing up this sort of corner thing here. The first thing that's gonna go on is gonna be the door casings that we made last time. Okay, I'm gonna leave this door casing just sort of in place for now until I get the sill installed. Cause I wanna make sure that this is gonna go in here and they're, you know, they're parallel so that my reveals on both sides are nice and consistent. Just, just in case a little bit of this going back and forth on the way down. Um, so I wanna get towards the sills. The bottom of my extension jams are currently still floating in space. They need to be supported, attached to the framing. So I'm gonna add that blocking now for the sill or for the, uh, the jam thing because people are gonna sit here. My kids are gonna stand here. This is gonna be weight on those uh, jam extensions. So I wanna make sure it's all supported so it doesn't flex and uh, you know, crack the paint or whatever in the future. Okay, one of the things that I'm gonna have to tweak on these sills is gonna be the position of that rabbit. And that's because my, uh, my extension jams are thicker on these windows, the ones I made, than the ones that came stock. They're an eighth of an inch thicker, so I need to remove an eighth of an inch of my rabbit so that these have nice and flush over here. So that's gonna be pretty easy. I'll take this down to the shop and just throw it on the table saw and pull another eighth of an inch out of that rabbit. 
and then it should just fit right up in there and be at the same elevation as the uh, uh, the one that's right there, the one we did last time. Okay, while I was at it, I notched for my framing. And this thing fits in here. And if I press it up into the jams here, I'm nice and flush in the corner. So this actually worked out really nicely. Um, I guess, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't really know the correct order of operations here. I'm gonna try and figure out where that's supposed to end because it needs to get mitered, returned, and I guess notched around the thickness of that casing. I, where exactly that is, <laughs> I don't really know yet. Okay, I've been giving this some thought and here's, uh, here's what I think I'm gonna do for a, a sum of a plan here. So I will cut my domino mortise from this side so I can make sure I get this thing tucked fully in. And then I'll just put a couple of screws through the, um, the jam into the sill to hold it in its final height and position. I will cut and fit this window casing so that I can install that and this at the same time. And then I can remove the sill and then that will be permanently in, in its final place then I can work kind of around it. I'm, I'm trying to get these two pieces on here so I can make sure they're not like doing one of these things. So I think sort of a, a dry assembly mock-up thing is gonna be the, the way for me to do this, at least so I can see it better. <laughs> I guess I could just install both of those just like that and then set the sill afterwards. Those on there. Now I'm gonna go back to the sill. Get this thing back in here, hopefully. Come on. There. Okay, so I think how I'm gonna go about this is I need to remove the thickness of this casing from the sill. So I think what I'll do is I'll remove that right now, make that notch. Once that notch is set and it fits in there, then I can figure out where my uh, miter needs to be for my return and how far out that needs to go. So I'm gonna mark this, and then we'll go notch the sill and see if we can get that in here. Okay, let's see how this fits. Okay.
Oh, that's nice. It ends right where it needs to and it laps right over top of here. So for the return, like I think about this from the bottom side of the sill, on the underside we'll have this cove molding. It's gonna sit kind of right around there, about, um, about an eighth of an inch from there. So I need to account for, I guess, this much going past here so that I can actually return this. So I can actually just do it like this. I need that distance there, which should be five eighths of an inch. <laughs> I think it can't, is it that simple? I don't know if it can be that simple. I'm a little worried that it's that simple. Yeah, I think it is that simple. I'm just gonna draw it right on here with this thing. Okay, let's see. Yep, that's actually correct. <laughs> it's, I don't know. Sometimes I just can't visualize things. Okay, this is ready to go on. <laughs> Finally. So we got uh, Donovan with his uh, portable CNC. We're set up in the barn uh, this time, cutting these pockets for the uh, receptacles into the baseboards. So all we're doing is, I've just got a tick mark here. We've already set our X, Y so that we're coming into the center of the uh, outlet. And once we set it up once, you just go. Yeah, so we just put, line up the mark we want it to be, the center line of yep. where we want it, which is my crappy pencil line. And, my, and our little <laughs> one there, we line those two up and push to go. Yeah, because we're referencing off this, this fence, essentially. This piece here is a fence. We can butt our workpiece into it and go to town. And we're just basically making a little pocket. So on the, the cut, it'll be like something like that. Cutting around here, the center between the top of the base and the top of the shoe mold. So it's actually off center uh, in the baseboard. Three and a half minutes. Not bad. There it is. Ta-da. <laughs> In the pile. Okay. That's it. All done. Yay. Pack it up. Get the hell out of here. I'm leaving. I'm done. <laughs> I quit or am I fired? Again. Yeah, well, well it's up for debate. <laughs> so now the last thing I have to do is square up these corners. You could leave them rounded and round the switch plate if you wanted to, or the cover plate if you wanted to. 
But uh, I'm not going to do that. I like corners. And these cover plates are just off the shelf. They're a pine cover plate that's supposed to look rustic, so it's kind of stained. Uh, I just sanded the top down, and this has just got some primer on it, and these just get cut to fit. The, uh, the stock one comes with like a bevel on the side to make it more decorative, so I just ripped that bevel off. And uh, I think this one's gonna fit okay. Probably needs a little bit of, a little bit more finesse. There's something there. There you go. That's kind of the finished look. It's in there, pretty well flush. And then of course the color will match once it's actually painted. But uh, I think it's gonna be a pretty slick looking look. This is a little tight still, but that's the uh, that's the look. Let's go drop this guy in. And here's the piece of cat mold. That's how it's gonna look. Uh, I'll do the shoe mold when I do the rest of the room, but let's just see how this is gonna look. Yeah, I like it. So at this point, I have either installed everything I can or install everything I have. The, uh, the baseboards down here I have, but I can't install those until I cut the pocket for the, uh, whatever, the vent cover plate things. <laughs> I need the clearance between the, the wall and the hole to get my router to be able to make that uh, recess thing. It's early, I'm having a hard time talking today. So what, what I'm saying is it's time to make more trim. <laughs> so. Let's just kind of take a quick look around and see what we need. There's a few little things here and there. And we'll go back to the shop and do this whole thing again. Do the whole make stuff thing again. So let's start on the, uh, the easy wall. I've got this casing here to make. And then I need the two pieces for the corner casing. Spinning around here, we have this window detail thing that we went back and forth on is what we're going to do here and I still don't know other than it's going to be there and I'm just going to make it exactly as it was drawn in the drawings so it'll start at the band board and then the top of the sill will be kind of at this height so we need the sill which I can just use the stock that I have from in here and just rip it to the right width and join it to my bottom jam and I'll create that sill detail uh, I need the apron and then we're also going to need the two casings down the sides and then the rest of the jam, the three sides of the jam. So with this one, because it's kind of smaller pieces, I'll just make longer sticks and we'll just chop them to the length when we do the install. So I need everything to make this window, at least for this face. I'm not going to worry about the pantry side of the trim just yet. This wall here, just a few minor things. Uh, corner trim for this window or the corner casings for these two windows. This uh, is going to have a case and it comes down to the sill height. And then beneath that, there'll be another piece that continues below the sill down to the floor. So a few small pieces there. And then the biggest or more most interesting thing we'll make is all of the V-board paneling, which will go around here. I'll do that after I get all of these flat pieces chopped and ready to go. And while we're kind of talking about flat pieces, this uh, area over here, I might as well do some stuff for later. And kind of get it knocked out. So I have the other uh, beam and column detail. We have the side pieces that we made already. I am just going to go ahead and make the jam for this opening. 
and the band board for this side and for that side so I can complete that beam detail. I can't do the column over here until I have the staircase installed. A staircase can't go in until this cabinet is built and installed. So there's some interdependencies. <laughs> now another thing that I'm going to do with this round of painting and prep is actually get the windows a little bit further along and ready for paint. So one thing that I want to do is remove these uh, trim stop things. These are what hold the screens uh, in the window. Uh, I want to take these out so I can get these fully painted on the inside. Let me pull one out of here. Oh, look, it's loose. These are just kind of pinned in. So I want to be able to make sure I can get paint in here because if this ever gets wet, I don't want just this surface to be painted. I want the bottom side to be painted. And with this out of here, it also reveals all the rest of the wood in here that can get some paint on it, you know, before this covers it up forever. So I'm going to pull all of these trim pieces off the windows and get them painted in this round. That way they're fully painted and I don't have to worry about, I mean, you would, it would be almost impossible to try and paint these, the insides of these in place. So, and that's when the windows open, this is totally open to the elements. So I, I feel better about having this fully sealed so they don't warp in the future if they get moisture on their underside. And that'll also open up this whole area here so I can start masking and prepping. And I will actually, I'll prime the windows in here uh, by hand instead of spraying them. And then I can put the trim pieces back in, caulk everything, and then they can get sprayed out as part of the whole spray all the trim at once final coat process. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna get this place cleaned up a little bit, move back down to the shop and start making some more trim, get these off the paint, and uh, it's, it's getting there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take care of the uh, 16 foot band board first, get it at least in the clamps while I work on the other stuff. And again, it's the same as last time or two times ago, whatever it was. And again, these are only available in an 8-inch uh, wide width. And I need a 10-inch. So I just need to add 2 inches to the width of this board. Nothing too crazy. It's just that it's so long. <laughs> this is the offcut from making the sill. And it's exactly two inches wide. So we can slap this bad boy on here. Call it a, I don't know, call it a five quarter by 10. Well, awesome, the clamps. I'm gonna go ahead and start processing this junk. Hello, pancake. Uh, we're gonna do window casings and get those knocked out first. Oh look, another band board. <laughs> so uh, I got the uh, the case, the window casings and the jams done, the big ones. The only stuff that's left now is just the stuff for that uh, pantry window. And that stuff's all pretty small. So I wanna go ahead and get all the stuff I've made so far sanded and out of here because uh, my shop's not made for big stuff like this. <laughs> and then I can deal with all the pantry window stuff, which is, you know, much smaller pieces. Yeah, I think I have all of my window stock prepped. I'm kind of burning through a bunch of scraps just to get rid of them. So here are my casings. This one's glued up. So those are all set for my jams. I have these offcuts. Those are gonna be the top and bottom casings or top and bottom jams. And then the side jams are here. These are also glue ups. Get rid of some more stuff. And I think, oh, this is the, uh, the apron stock. The apron stock is going to come out of this extra piece we had from doing the uh, the office trim. I can just rip 
the uh, apron stock right out of here and have my bead detail uh, out of this. And I think to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna do some uh, pre-assembly here in the shop and just prep things. So especially with the apron, I can rip that and then the sides get returned to the wall so I can make that assembly in the shop now. It also gets this cold molding applied to the top edge so I can actually go ahead and assemble that now as one full unit with this return to the wall, with the bead return to the wall and this paint doll as one single thing. I'm also, I'm gonna do that as well with the, the bottom jam. So the bottom jam gets that sill and it's gonna go onto both sides, the, uh, the outside that faces the sunroom and then on the other side that faces the pantry. This gets returned back to the wall as well. And then I can make this all nice and seamless now instead of trying to do that when it's actually installed and in place. So I'm gonna run through and just make all of this stuff, I guess. And uh, <laughs> this, there's a lot of little pieces to, uh, to get this ready to go. I may have taken this a little further than I was originally planning, but I think this is uh, much easier than trying to do all of this on the wall, especially all that sill stuff, getting it all flushed up and getting all the work. Uh, what's going on here? Hmm. There we go. And then we'll have these casings here. Go something like that. And that is the completed sunroom side <laughs> of the window assembly. The other side inside the pantry ties into the wainscot and everything else and the trimming to make up the thickness of the wainscot. So we'll do this side of the window when we get to the pantry, but at least this is uh, all good and ready for paint. I will say this, the way this was originally designed by the architects I'll show you that in a second, was designed so that the, the window itself would capture or the frame would capture the window panel as it goes in there. Since I don't really know what's going in here yet, I made it like this so that it looks good as just an opening. Um, let me show you the, the way that it was supposed to work out. So the way they had laid this out, this is a view looking down from the top. You can see that the jam itself was actually rabbited to receive the whole window unit as a frame assembly. And then this little piece here gets put onto it. So the sill on the inside, the pantry side, would have this sort of quarter inch little lip thing on here that would then capture the window uh, assembly itself. And you would have no, basically no um, blocking or strips on the outside to catch the window. So it'd be really clean on the outside. The way I'm doing it, that if I want to put a window unit in here in the future, I would have to add blocking on the inside and the outside. I'm not too worried about that. I can make the blocking kind of look interesting or be kind of fun, add some detail. I could even pick up the same OG that's on this uh, glass holding assembly. So, or the sticking, I guess. I could use the same sticking molding down here to create a little bit of a transition from the sill into the window itself. But I thought it was kind of a cool way of doing it. There's just, you know, it's just made to receive it. And then it's really clean looking on the in, on the uh, on the outside because that window is like basically sitting down in its own sort of half dado <laughs> kind of thing. So this is going to go off to paint, and while it's getting painted, we're going to go back inside and install some of the stuff that uh, we just made not too long ago. Thank you. 
So it turns out I don't have any uh, half inch remnants anymore. I had a bunch of them, but uh, you get to a point where there's just too much crap laying around and uh, you toss everything. <laughs> so I really feel like going to town and picking up a sheet or a partial sheet of half inch. So we're using these. These are the pieces I cut from up top. So we're just, we're using this stuff, I guess. I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna float the whole area, I guess. We'll make it up in mud. All right, I know I should be using hot mud for this, but if you're curious why I'm not using it, uh, I refer you back to the same reason that we're using these small pieces of sheetrock. When I installed the top band board, I got excited and got ahead of myself and I forgot to put the dominoes into the corner area. So now I can't get my domino up here to actually make those pockets. I got the ones on this one. This one doesn't have any. So I'm gonna use the uh, some drywall screws in here, like little jack screws to make sure that when this goes in here, it doesn't actually roll back because my window jam is a little proud of the drywall. And this band board is actually proud of this uh, jam as well because this window is that way a little further so I'm gonna have to kind of shim things in behind it to make sure this thing ends up nice and flush and stays that way and it's gonna be like that pretty much the whole way down so I will be putting screws down the whole length for this thing to butt into so it's parallel with the, uh, the actual jam. Now it's that nice and parallel here on the sill. If it was rolled, you would really see this because it would be this kind of wedge look of the casing coming down to the sill, but it's nice and parallel. I'm happy. Okay. So for my uh, return piece, since I don't have any framing, I added some more blocking on here to attach the, uh, the casing to a little better. And what I was planning on doing was taking this wider board and like putting it up there and just, you know, scribing the actual angle and everything on here because I figured there'd be some inconsistency. But uh, as, I'm, as I'm looking at this, there is inconsistency, but it is 1 32nd of an inch. Don't care. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned for this, with this uh, reveal on here, you'll never see that. So instead of scribing this in, I'm just going to go rip it to exactly what I need, cut it to length and slam it in.
I like when things work out nicely. Okay, there's that corner all done and complete. So those three casings are there. No more exposed framing on this side of the room. I'm gonna spin around to this side and get this looking pretty similar. So the first thing on here is going to be, you know, it's kind of the same thing as last on the other side there is the sill. So to cut this to length and figure out where it needs to end and have that return. It's a little bit different than the other side. This one actually returns into the wall, whereas that one returned into a casing. So maybe it'll be easier. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully I can still visualize where that actually has to end at, unlike last time. Okay, so after some finagling, <laughs> I had to cut a rabbit on the bottom of the rabbit, cut back as much of the uh, drywall as possible. This thing slides up in there now pretty nicely. And I think just to one last sanity check, what I'm gonna do is lay things out from the underside because that's how my brain works. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my jam location, bring it down here onto the wall. Okay, so that's my jam, and then my reveal. There's three sixteens there, and this is the little, um, I don't know what I call this, continuation of the casing down here onto the floor. There's the edge of that. And then plus that half inch for my uh, cove molding, which is going to return in like that. Actually, it's a little wider than that right there. Plus, I want the cove molding to be back from the edge, about an eighth of an inch. So right about there. That should be the inside of the miter, <laughs> at least in theory. Okay, so that's my miter. That's not right. <laughs> Hang on. I learned this last time, I think. That's where I want the inside to be. So the miter's here. The miter's facing the right way. It's an outside miter. I'm going to double check this and then uh, make that cut. <laughs> yep, that's right. Okay. So I guess just to think about it, we're just working with just this area in our minds. <laughs> the profile itself on the outside of the sill doesn't really matter. All I care about is this flat area, which is going to receive all the other details. Like this cove molding. Okay, let's get the return on here, get this domino in here, and get this thing installed.
this just fit a second ago? What the hell? It's still tipped up, maybe. There we go. That's good. Okay, let's get this guy attached, I guess. I guess. All right, that looks nice. Yay! <laughs> so I was gonna keep going and put this other corner piece on here, but the, the piece that I made to rip those out of is a little too narrow, so my remainder is like a quarter inch smaller than I would need to actually make that last casing. So this is where we're gonna call this one. I think we made a pretty good amount of progress. I was hoping to have all the casings done so we could say, hey, we got all the windows and doors cased, but whatever, we're getting closer. Next time we'll do the baseboard and the other casing and probably finally make that paneling for down there and set that window and uh, we gotta do the vents. So, a little more to go. <laughs> but that's gonna do it for this one. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the home renovation, remodel, addition thing, whatever it is, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.